Hello, and thank you for visiting any electronics. We'll learn about the extrinsic type of semiconductor in this episode. In our earlier video, we saw that there are two types of semiconductors. The intrinsic, or pure kind of semiconductor, extrinsic, or artificial, or impure, or doped semiconductor. Let us first comprehend the principles of hole, the flow of electrons, and holes in a semiconductor and recombination and lifetime before moving on to the extrinsic form of semiconductor. The atoms of a silicon crystal vibrate as a result of the external heat energy. Vibrations increase as heat energy increases. The atom's motions can knock an electron out of the valence orbit. The same electron has now accumulated enough energy from the external heat energy to jump into the larger orbit. A hole is the space created by an electron in valence orbit. Let us study what occurred to that electron that migrated from the valence orbit to the larger orbit before learning more about the hole. This electron, which has been moved to the larger orbit, is now free to wander around the silicon crystal. This electron is referred to as a free electron. I hope you now understand what a free electron is. Now there are a few key elements to remember regarding the hole. In the simplest terms, a hole is the lack of an electron in an atom. The electron has a negative charge, thus when an atom loses an electron, it forms a positive ion. As a result, the hole behaves as if it had a positive charge. As a result, we shall assume that the charge of the hole is positive for our purposes. So far, We've learned what a hole is and that its charge is positive. Because the charges of electrons and holes are diametrically opposed, a free electron will attract and combine with a hole. Recombination is the term for this phenomenon. The time between the formation and disappearance of a free electron is called lifetime. So, let's look at how electrons and holes pass through a semiconductor. But, before we get started, there's one more thing to consider. We've only seen thermal energy as a cause of free electron and hole formation, and the amount of free electrons and holes is the same at the same time. Let's put a pure silicon crystal between two metallic plates charged opposite to each other. Let's assume that because of thermal energy, for instance, a free electron and a hole were generated. Take a good look at the video. The positive side of the metal plate will attract the electron and at the same time it will be pushed back through the negative side of the metal plate. It justifies the electron's movement, but what about the hole? The hole will attract the very next valence electron, will complete the recombination process, and will create a hole in the same place of valence electron. The newly generated hole will once again attract the next valence electron and the same process will continue until it reaches the negative side of the metal plate. Thus we can see the flow of electrons and holes through a semiconductor and they are just opposite one another. As free electrons and holes carry charges, they are frequently referred to as carriers. Therefore, we are left to ask, can a semiconductor be made more conductive? The answer is yes. Doping is the process of increasing the conductivity of a semiconductor. To put it another way, adding impurity atoms to a pure or intrinsic semiconductor. A semiconductor of this type is called an extrinsic semiconductor. We can either increase the number of electrons or holes in a semiconductor at a time. In order to increase the number of electrons in a silicon crystal, we need to add atoms that have more than four valence electrons, so that these atoms can donate electrons to the silicon crystal. These electrons are called donor impurities. A pentavalent element is doped inside the pure silicon crystal to increase the number of electrons. Examples of pentavalent atoms are arsenic, antimony, and phosphorus. Whenever we dope a silicon crystal with pentavalent atoms, the pentavalent atoms belong at the center, surrounded by the four silicon atoms. Hence, the valence orbit of the pentavalent central atom will consist of nine electrons. 
A central silicon atom will receive four extra electrons that are shared by its four neighbors. The maximum number of electrons occupying a valence orbit is eight, as we saw in our last video due to valence saturation. So, now that the extra electron belongs to a larger orbit, it is now a free electron. Similarly, we will examine how to increase the number of holes in the silicon crystal. As we can see, to increase the number of holes, we need to reduce the electrons in the silicon crystal. To achieve this, we will dope the silicon crystal with trivalent impurities. A trivalent atom has three electrons in its valence orbit. Examples of trivalent elements are aluminum, boron, and gallium. If we dope a pure silicon crystal with trivalent atoms, the trivalent atom appears in the center and is surrounded by all four silicon atoms. Each silicon atom shares a valence electron in the trivalent atom. Therefore, there are seven electrons in the valence orbit. In another word, a hole appears in the valence orbit of the trivalent atom. We now understand that by adding extra impurities, we can control the flow of electrons or holes in a semiconductor. A n-type semiconductor is a semiconductor, which is doped with pentavalent atoms to control the flow of electrons, while for a p-type semiconductor, it is doped with trivalent atoms to control the flow of holes. A n-type semiconductor has a majority carrier electron and a minority carrier hole. N stands for negative here. A p-type semiconductor has a majority carrier hole and a minority carrier electron. P stands for positive here. We'll learn about unbiased PN junction diodes in our next video. Please follow us on other social media platforms so you will be notified about our upcoming videos. I would appreciate your thumbs up and suggestions in the comment section. If you like the video, please subscribe to Any Electronics to receive updates on the latest videos. Thank you.